Romans chapter 5, this is verses 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through who? Jesus. Because he did make the sacrifice. Amen. And when he said it was finished, the veil was torn. So total access to God and his holiness and all of that. Relationship with him, everything, the fullness, was restored through Jesus. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand. Now, here's the part we're getting to. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, pressures, affliction, anguish, burdened persecution, tribulation, trouble, pressing, pressure. This is just what this word means. It goes on. Oppression, affliction, tribulation, distress, straits. Knowing that tribulation produces something. Maybe this isn't the best illustration. Maybe, it, maybe it's a good one. I, it's the only one I have. Because I was, I was actually thinking about this word um, this week. And uh, I don't know if you ever played any sports or had any kind of an exercise program or anything. But there's this one particular exercise that's not my total favorite. <laughs> it's called wall squats. You ever done wall squats? Even tried to do wall squats? You know, you know what that's like, right? You start to feel the burning. And, and you stay. And it burns more. And, and, it's, and it's right, you know, it's all... And you, you got your back against the wall in case there's anybody here that isn't familiar. I'm not going to do the exercise, but <laughs> if my back's against the wall and you're in this position, you, you must... This is tight, you know, even, even what I'm doing right now. And there is a sort of a pressing, a, you know, you've got to stay under. And my ultra not favorite is the one-legged wall squats. Where you, I don't know if you tried that one, but um, there's a staying under. And I'm not trying to bring this into the physical. I'm trying to just bring an illustration that if done... If you stay under, there's something gained in the physical if you stay under that. You guys understand, why would we do it if it didn't, you know? Um, you kind of following me here? Staying under for a period and coming out of that, there is a gain where there is a strength that wasn't there before. Where you're being tested, where you're staying under, right? Right? So, not always uh, should we have the attitude of trials, pressings, tribulations, rebuking Satan day and night. Uh, <laughs> there is a process that he will take you through. God, that is. He will, he will take you through a process. And... Staying under, in faith, staying in faith and believing God through trials, it will produce patience. One of the most accurate words that we might use is steadfastness. Have you ever met somebody who was, you would consider steadfast? Um, someone who was consistent? They've been through some things, that's why. Because that individual has character. Why? Because they've been tested. It doesn't just appear. <laughs> this is biblical. I mean, this is a biblical to topic. I'm not making things up. I'm not adding anything or taking anything away. Staying under tribulation does produce something in your character. Okay? 
it produces a steadfastness that wasn't there. It, ex- it, it, it also produces tried character. And I'll, I'll read the rest. And experience that tried character, then hope is produced. That's confident, joyful expectation of what God has told you. And isn't it interesting, and I was talking to my wife about this, we were just taking a drive, I don't even know what we were up to, but how, I just said, you know, isn't it interesting how God spoke to Abraham about having, you know, a promised seed, you know, a son, he wanted a son. He came to God and he literally said, well, as it stands right now, my my most faithful servant is going to be my heir. You know, I, I don't even have a son. You know, he's just bringing it to the Lord. He says, you're going to have a son. So God told him, in fact, you're going to have so many children. Look at the, you know, stars of the sky and the sand of the seas. There was twofold promise. You know, not only the Messiah would come through his genetic line, through his seed, Isaac. And so spiritually there would be as the stars in the heavens, if you could count those, you know. But also nations and kings are going to come from your loins. And then there was a whole big, huge span of waiting and time and testing and time. But God changed his name to uh, Father. <laughs> uh, it's a, it went from uh, Exalted Father, I think, is Abraham's name, where he literally renamed him what he promised him to expect children. And so every time his wife Sarah would speak his name, it was speaking the prophetic word that God had for him, but yet there was such a space of time between what God said he would do for him and what he would accomplish in his life and the promise and when it actually manifested, you know, because he was 100 years old. And Sarah was 99, if I remember the scriptures right. And he changed Sarah's name too, to expect to be a mother. And so every time they would even speak each other's names, there was an expectation, but there was a trial period. But through that trial period, there was such a joyful expectation of what God had said, because Romans talks about Abraham and it says, he believed God. Without any doubt, he had a joyful expectation of what God had said. And so, it produced something in Abraham (laughs) that could not have been there had there not been a period of time of testing where he simply believed what God said no matter what, no matter how long. Can you imagine being 100 years old and having been promised children? And he believed God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, Beloved, think it not strange. Don't be shocked because of the fiery trial which is to try you. Some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice exceedingly. (laughs) Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. James chapter 1 says, Count it joy, my brethren, when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces steadfastness, right? Patience. 